Hello, and welcome to Piano Tech Radio Hour, the weekly bridge to the future of the Piano Tech community. I'm David Anderson. And I'm Ethan Janney. And we're here to ask great questions, and then we'll shut up and listen to some of the authorities, experts, and most outstanding personalities in our little world of pianos. So, put on your best set of headphones. And let's get started. Uh, welcome, everyone, to Piano Tech Radio Hour. Just want to remind you that this uh, project is made possible by Piano Technicians Masterclasses. We have the latest in cutting edge piano technology education, online interactive and live masterclasses for the discerning piano technician. And you can find out more at pianotechniciansmasterclass.com. And Today's episode, we have Boaz Kirchenbaum, who many of you already know of, but I'll tell you, he was employed by Steinway and Sons from 2003 to 2006. His mentors include Bruce Clark, Ron Connors, Alex Markovich, Eric Chandal, and David Stanwood. Boaz is a precision touch design installer and action specialist. He returned to field service in 2015 as a full-time road warrior for Frederick Mudge, servicing all of New England and New York City, and there he is in Mudge Headquarters, uh, the office and workshop Mudge area right now. Welcome, Boaz. <laughs> Hello, all. Good to have you. And we're glad Thanks that you're feeling me. better. Yeah, I don't have COVID, so that's good. I got <laughs> tested and I feel bad. I'm sorry I bailed. I just, I was like, I lost a week of work, but I'm fine now. And of course, now the clients love that I have my little proof of I tested negative. So, because we're busy. So I guess, should I get started? I mean, do you want me to? Absolutely. Yeah, well, I'll explain real quick, you know, because I think generally, and then you can explain. Uh, Boaz was going to come on a couple of weeks ago. He called in sick last minute. We appreciated, <clears throat> you know, he's a very hardworking gentleman. So it, he must have been quite sick. So we appreciate him coming back. And he had a plan for last time, which is around tools. And I think he's just going to follow through on that. And yeah. we'll let him take the reins and then we'll cut in, we'll ask questions, we'll deliver your questions. And Boaz is uh, a very fun fellow. So we'll have a good time as well. Not to put any pressure on you, Boaz, but uh, I think we'll have some cool. fun too. We're all friends here. <laughs> all right. Okay, so yeah, so take it away. Tell us what you want to talk about. I'm a tool guy. I always have been. I've worked as a part-time machinist. I've worked on boats, worked on freaking, I ran a restaurant and I'm a tool guy. I have hundreds of tools just for piano work. Uh, I have my road kit. I'm primarily a road guy. I do 900 calls a year. I'm also the shop manager here and I do two days a week. I work six days a week total. Today, we're not going to really talk about shop tools. We're going to talk about my road warrior basic kit. I've narrowed it down to what I call my top 20 greatest hits of stuff I think is cool. I want to show you guys because you do not want to hear me talk all day about hundreds of tools. I will give you the master list and I'm going to publish that. It's on a Dropbox. I'll put the link in the chat later. I also have the list of what I'm going to be talking about today and where to get it. Some of the tools I'm going to show you guys are not available in stores or from me. They were gifts from mentors. Some of them are from Japan, Germany. Some were made for me. Um, I, so that's the caveat. But there's some very cool ones that you could make or get a machinist to make or email some buddies and sweet talk them. Um, yeah. But... Uh, I just thought I wanted to show you a lot of stuff I use a lot. I work on every kind of piano you can think of. When I joined the practice five years ago, our oldest piano in the fleet is an 1852 Chickering Square in its original home with its second owner. Wow. We also work on a Style 1 Steinway. We work on a Chopin Tribute Broadwood, of which there are two in the world. And we oh. work on brand new Buzzendorfer Yamaha. We're the Steinway service guys now for New England. Steinway contracts us. So we do a lot. We work on everything. Our business manager, Jenny, who's, I'm sitting in air traffic control near her desk where my desk is. She says, Fred and I will go anywhere and repair and tune anything. Our limit is, is it five hours? We'll do it. Actually, I've flown to New Orleans and Houston and Iceland and Finland to frickin' fix pianos. So literally, we'll try to go. In. So let's get into it. 
I want to start with the tool that changed my entire life. Just want to say you, uh, New Orleans piano technicians got to step up your game. If you got, they got, they're flying in Boas. That was a special. <laughs> Take notes. That was a, Take that notes. Was a Flutner. I had a blast. The guy is this rich pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon who is oh. an amazing classical pianist. And he has, a, he had a new Blutner and he wow. didn't like the sound. And I worked for him in his apartment up here in his Yamaha. And he's like, oh, yeah. want to come visit? I'll like take you out for three days. Uh, oh my God. What a one. I love New Orleans. <laughs> so That's I, such I, a great excuse. It's been four days in Every New Orleans. Of something comes along like that. That's just insanely. Genius. He was like, how much? I said, I, nothing. You're going to like, I got to work for four hours on your piano and I get it. I've never been in New Orleans. Count me in, dude. So that was kind of cool. And I just, all I did was tune and voice as Blutner. Like it was uh, kind of, that was it. <laughs> so anyway, awesome. I go anywhere. He just wanted the doctor, right? He just wanted the doctor. Yes, Dr. K. So the, the biggest tool, so I had serious issues 10 years ago. I had repetitive stress problems, not in my head, in my arm. Um, I had tuner's arm. I had rotator cuff stuff that started at Steinway. I was really messed up. And I found out that a lot of it was tool choice, not using Alexander technique. Uh -huh. There's a whole class in all this. And between David Anderson and Eric Johnson, they were like, dude, you're killing yourself. Stop it. Because we really like you. So I am a fan of the Food John. I have like two or three of these. This is the carbon fiber, titanium, awesomeness. This made me pain free, made my tunings rock solid. I can turn, I can feel a tenth of a cent. This is the killer kick ass tuning lever. This or the Falk, problem solved, done. you it's just it's all there's to it. Now, people that. sometimes make fun of me of the thousands of dollars I've spent on tools. I'm like, I'm investing in my life. This is my calling. My brother's a visual effects editor, the software and and desktop he uses is a $300,000 machine. He's like, this is our life. We have tools. Yeah, these are expensive, but they're awesome. Fujon, my next go-to. This is made for me by Keith Bowman at Renner. The chopstick tool, the chopper with totally groovy screw cap, because they have a saying in Japan, it's not voiced until there's blood. I don't like bleeding on felt. And I was always hurting myself. I'm like, Keith, I want the screw top. Yeah. And I want the Coca Bolo. Because for me, if I have nice tools, whether I'm working on a spinet or a Bessendorfer or a Blutner or a Steinway or a CFX or anything, I'm inspired by having cool tools. It makes me feel good, brings me joy. If I don't have good tools, and feels good. My job is about creating beauty and making people have fun. It's play. It's called play. Kent Webb actually taught me that. He said it's called playing. It's playing piano. It's making fun. Yeah. So chopstick is awesome because you can go through the string and do spot voicing in like a second. Okay, the next voicing tool. This is inspired by Markovich at Steinway. This is a tool that. You can get from Beyond. It is not cheap. This is the. This is different from the Piano Tech. This is the adjustable. I now have it set up as a single needle, but you can make it a triple needle if you want. Super smooth action. Yeah. Retractable. Uh, Jurgen at Piano Forte Supply has those too. He does now. Yes, you can get them from Jurgen because he brings yeah. them in from Jan. There's a an old. So what I call piano gnome in Germany that makes these and they're awesome. This is my second go-to. I it's, can choose my depth. It's my second favorite tool of, of all tools. You know? Yeah, me too. It's like, wow. it's, it's the one because I can do my shoulder, my battery, my cross stitch, my Steinway jazz, my Unicorda. I can I sugarcoat if I want. Yeah, I do these weird 11 millimeter stabs right yeah. down the sacred area. Uh -uh. And that's that uh, you can dial it in, man. 11 millimeters in the middle, 
a little bit less up ahead, you know, up, up there. It's just, it's insane. It's groovy. It's a great tool. The only thing it doesn't do well on, because you have to use the narrower needles, it doesn't take the big ones, is it doesn't do great on rocks, unlike Renner Blues from the 80s. When you get into shoulder, especially if some Yahoo's lacquered them and they've turned into golf balls, you it breaks have a needles. Big ass, big ass needle in a, in a pin vice. Big. Yeah, well, so my big ass needle is a tool that's not made anymore by Flugelbauer. That, oh wow yeah this is a flugelbauer <laughs> that i machined out and i put a compass point in jesus the compass points for the deep sugaring i learned from david stanwood yeah like yeah, today yeah i had a i had a 1959 yamaha g1 original there's a recording she doesn't have any money I couldn't, you know, I can't spend a day. I tuned it, and then all I did was some deep sugaring on the crown of pretty much 80% of the piano. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's better. And it just means boom, 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 boom. I'm not going in and doing deep shoulder. I was like, I got to go, I got to go do my radio show. I'm not going to, this is great for that. And it's not wow. hard. It's not hard to do. Oh, so it's, it's in a way, an analog of what I do, which is put a tube of air under the string cuts. Yeah. It's, it's like that. It's like pushing, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and and fluffing. and It's getting the bounce the characteristic. Go, yeah, like that. Like bounce more. Instead of... Yeah, yeah. It's exactly. going... Yeah. Awesome. It's so it actually That's sounds awesome. good. I had a customer ask me, well, how can you make my sound better, my piano sound better? I'm going to stick needles into the felt until it sounds good. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> That's it. That sounds simplified. And, and some other little things too, but. Yeah. Well, you know, it's. In English, doctor. <laughs> this is made for me by Ken Huebner in Connecticut. This is a string lifting tool with a okay. custom made some kind of groovy South American handle that he thought would be cool. And string lift, this is, oh. this is hammer, this is fitting hammer to string. A lot of times I'm not doing what Chris Brown talked about where I'm making a totally square plane because I don't want to destroy my tuning. If I got a super stable tuning, I'll compromise and fit the hammer to the string. I'll look for open strings. And what if I only have 20 minutes and I'm not going to retune? I'm going to do my fit, which is extremely important, especially in the capo section for clarity and focus of tone. Fit the felt to the strings, please. You practice it, not that hard. But this is a great tool. It's the exact height. Go through the strings, lift, check right. the open strings, move on. That's what so you got to do. They're, they're more even and level than not in the capo area, is, in, in, yeah. is my experience. Yeah. Right. And speaking right. of the capo area, I'd like to show off the um, huge fan of the, sorry for the noise, Scott Jones, Jesus. the string coupling setup. I don't know if you guys know about this, the string couplers, the pitch lock system. Let's see if I find it. Somewhere there. Um, that actually, it's better to go online to pitchlock.com. There are these little couplers that are like jumpers between strings. You can go left to, there's two sizes. Um, you use a very fine needle nose and they can go left to right, left to center, right to center. It cleans up the sound. It doesn't miraculously solve the sizzle or the issues like in 70s Steinways. Makes it better. You can get a 30% improvement in tone by That's coupling. Good. You can get your tuning stability better. It's, what it's doing is getting their phase better. It's lining them up a little more solidly. It takes practice because they're darn small, fiddly little things. They're small. They're like a half millimeter wide. And you need a, you need a magnetizer because you need to magnetize your small needle nose when you're in there because they're carbon steel. Um, and they go, obviously, they go before the capo not on the speaking length we did a bunch of experiments together in cna and that's where the magic spot is 
You can also put them on bicords in the base right after the A graph. You can try that too. The magnetizing is really important because you don't want to drop these things and you want to take the action out to do this because you do not want to drop these little things in the action. Ooh. But pitchlock.inc, pitchlock.com is the, there's a kit he sells for string coupling. And to me, that's working in the belly. That's voicing. That's not just sticking needles into the felt. That's also working with, with the strings. Along those lines, I use a little bit different setup than uh, was discussed last week with um, working with strings. <clears throat> this is a Falk string massager. Very nice titanium tool. I got the uh, Claro walnut. And this, uh, I love, I love nice wooden handles. So this you can slide, not kink, slide along your strings in the treble. You can get a 20% improvement in false beats. You can get your termination solid without whacking them in. He I calls it the thumb. Yeah, I saw this class with Charlie. Great class. He's such a cool guy, the too. Massage and the string leveling from underneath, which is fabulous. Which is this. Yeah. Yep. 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 This is a lever. This lever is different than the Menino or the bass string or the any of those tools. It's a little more subtle. You can see the angle there. Yeah. So you're not hauling up on it. You're going underneath. You're bending it. Bending. bending. You're not kinking. Yeah. 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 So this tool is very handy. Now, these aren't cheap. Charles got to make these. This is like 60 bucks, but you're going to make it in one job. You're going to make so it in a fraction of a, one a job. A fraction of a job, yeah. Very handy voicing tools. That's working yeah. with the strings. Nothing to do with the hammer, really. Um, Here's the deal. You know, we talk about voicing just real quickly. Boaz, yeah. And everybody else. Everything is voicing. You just, Tuning. you just, yeah, for sure. But let's talk about regulation. You play the about piano, it's, like, it's, 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 it's okay. You regulate the hell out of the action. And it's like, whoa, everything got so much better because you voiced it. Everything is voicing, lining stuff up, making stuff work right yeah. in its world is voicing. Well, everything's sound. Everything's tone. We work with we're yeah. sounds. We're like EQ guys, engineers, mastering engineers in the audio world. We're yeah. sound guys. That's right. The first time I got hip yeah. to what David Anderson's talking about was in Australia. I was working on a Buzzendorf for two twenty five. In my top five favorite designs, pianos. Period. Yeah. They're just awesome. Yeah. 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 And this thing, I had to do pitch raise tuning. The regulation was out to lunch. The guy was a serious pianist and he said, I don't like the voicing. So I tuned it, did a real good pitch raise and tune, put my usual stretch in, bedded the keyframe. With one of these, the Yamaha tool, because you got to go underneath on German and Viennese pianos. Bedded the keyframe. Let off was a couple miles away. It was at like four millimeters. Jeez. Keyframe bedding helped that. Did some regulation in two hours. Didn't touch the strings or the felt at all. Thank you. Thank he comes you. back, he plays it, and he said, I didn't know you were going to revoice it today, but I love it. I said, well, technically, I just regulated it and made it to where it was supposed to be. You should have said, yup, I did. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I was younger then. I talk a lot less. <laughs> exactly customers. right. Wisdom progresses. I'm 46. At the time, I was 32. I don't even talk this much to like anybody. I'm yeah. an introvert. I, with clients, I talk as little as possible because I don't have a lot of time. Yeah. The work can speak for itself. And sometimes I get clients looking at my tools and they're like, man, my last tuner didn't have that stuff. Those are pretty. That yeah. wood's pretty. That like leather tool roll from Japan that holds my voice. That's pretty. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. My voicing paddle. This is from Schimmel. 
Rosewood. Very cool. You use paddle and not strips? Is that the deal? I do both. I'm okay. the strips I use the 3M micro finishing from Jurgen. That's not on today's greatest hits. I do use strips. I use both. Okay. So the paddle, you can make this, but I just thought it was cool. But I even made it crazier. It's that I epoxied on Velcro and I use Festool from Germany pre-cut strips that I already have refills for in the shop. When this 80 grit or 120 grit wears out, I just peel off the Velcro. I don't have to re-glue and I just put it on and it's ready for the road. Wow. Took me awesome. five minutes to figure that out. I'm like, why am I why am I re-gluing sandpaper? Why am I using bad sandpaper? Festool makes awesome strips for like high-end cabinet guys. We're kind of high-end cabinet guys. So that's my groovy hammer. This is also if you go too far with the voicing and the pianist, like David was talking about a couple weeks ago. If you take off that attack they love, if you kill it down to marshmallow world. Even on one note in the melody, they're like, hate you. dude, hate you. What, what did I you don't do? like. You killed this note, they'll say. So right. hopefully, I remember one of my classes, someone was like, isn't there like a spectrum analyzer app? To le yeah, it's called whatever's between your left ear and your right ear. Yeah. So if you go too far <laughs> in your voicing, file it up. Don't grab the juice. There's no juice. That's a, that's the final thing. Don't just bang pour it. hard and rock. No, no. File bang first. It up. Bang it up. File bang it up. up. File bang the shape up. point File here. Up. Come on. Get a little more point instead of round. Use your tools. It takes two minutes. Okay, so getting onto regulation cool tools. I have a prototype. There's only two of these that Jurgen made for me. This is for Yamaha style Dowel let off. Oh. with a nice bent tip, which is perfectly sized for all dowel let off styles. Even the little teeny ones? Because it's tapered. Oh. And we also figured out the ideal thumb concavity. So when you're in there, boom, 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 doing your let off, you're not in there with your freaking capstan turner going, <laughs> oh, oh, whoops. Then I snapped the dowel on the 40-year-old D-series Yamaha. Did I bring my CA glue? No, 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 no. The length fits snugly right in. Because you guys have all worked on dowel let off. It's tricky. This will get... So then we thought, well, we can't really make these easily. And, but you actually could make this if you wanted to. Actually, Jack Howling made those for your... Yeah, they've been made. Yeah, Jack. Jack's a great guy. Jürgen and I sort of brought him this drawing. And Jack was like, yeah, I'll make it. Because I know I say Jürgen made it, but we made it in our brains. And then Jack is the actual That's dude right. who has skills. I, so. I, I have one of those. Those are awesome. Oh, oh, you have one. Okay, so I'm yeah. wrong. There's not only two. There's three. <laughs> Next on the wooden. You gave me one at a, at a convention. At a conference. Right. Yeah, I don't. I didn't pay for this. This is a gift. Next on Woodworld, this is from Jan. This is a wooden handled spring tool. Ooh. With a little hook on the end. Can you guys see the hook? Yeah. Shorting against my cheek. Little hooky. Yeah. Slightly blurry, but it's good. Instead of the all metal heart tool with the rubber handle, yeah, this is not cheap. I think these are like eighty dollars. This is actually a you, gift from a technician. Do you, why do you prefer that from the heart tool? Um, well, first it was a gift from my good friend Kirsty in Finland, so I have a sentimental attachment. Kiersey, actually, I have two of these. I have a whole tuning backup kit with my basic concert regulation tools and another tuning setup. I have a whole, that's a little bag. So I actually have two of these. Okay, so first reason sentimental. Second, I am I love wood. Brings me joy. Yeah. I like having wood. You know, this Kirstie is said wood. hi. She's in the chat. Hey, yeah, uh, Kirstie's here. She's staying up late because it's uh, seven hours ahead. Yeah. So it makes me happy. That's why I like it. 
a heart tool it no doesn't problem. make me happy. I gotcha. It works well too. It's hey, look, this is what we were talking about before. Yeah. What's your state of being when you're doing this anyway? You can't be this excellent unless you're having a pretty good time. You need you to know, have a that's, good time. That's just kind of the wisdom of craftsmanship. You can't really be rocking and rolling unless you're having a good time. If you're looking at your watch and kind of thinking about the mortgage and everything else, this is not maybe perhaps the little domain for you. Yes, yeah. and you just you've lost it. I don't know, but you got to get that ah, inspiration. Ah. Yeah, that's exactly right. I'm sorry. Also, Go ahead. I used to be a lot more stressed out. I used to fight pianos. I used to be moody and frustrated. That that guy, I don't like him. He's not fun to be around. Part of it was I was self-employed, and I'm not suited to that. I'm way better in this practice as a lieutenant, so I'm happier. Um, better, better with a paycheck, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm on commission, but yeah, it's that, but also... Just, you know what I'm saying. To, you know what think. I'm saying. Something I'm not like, tuning thinking about, oh, the bucks. And also, I don't like fighting pianos. I really don't like them to fight me. They're my friend. I want them to be healthy. Yeah. So whatever I can do to not feel like I'm fighting or stressed or... Because dudes, I work on 110-year-old Iverson Pond with brass or Billings flange. I work on weirdo stuff that people don't want to touch. I work Ooh. on Viennese actions. Ooh. I work on old-ass Steinways from the Ooh. 70s, horrid vintage. Then I work on new stuff. All of uh. them need to be my friend. So gifts from buddies. Helps me feel yeah. like they're my friends. Wow. <clears throat> You've honestly got a much bigger context and frame of reference than I do. I'm, much I'm trying, more, man. I'm much more judgmental than you and much more like effete, I guess you could say. I, Dude, <laughs> I used like, to be a snob. I used to be like, <laughs> well, also, when I work at Steinway, Steinway's culture is of arrogance. When you work there, you gotta, they're like, listen, we want you to get you in a line because we've got this vat of Kool-Aid and we've got these tubes of the Kool-Aid for you to drink. Ooh. And once you drink it, you're then brainwashed into this, like there's Ooh. us and there's everybody else. And I've found like Yamaha's culture is not like that. Buzzendorfer, which is owned by Yamaha, not like that. Most manufacturers are not like that. They know there's room. How and did you get your brain dirty again? After I never washed. drank it, dude. You never. Oh, you you just made it look like you drank the cool. I made it look like it. I'm a good chameleon. I'm a good actor. I studied theater for a while. I played the. I knew I wasn't a company man. I'm like, at that time, I wanted to voice hundreds of Steinways. I wanted to work with Ron Connors. I wanted to learn. I was like, I want to go to grad school and not pay for it. There and you I had go. This dream in my head, which everyone said was impossible. I said. I want to go to Germany. I want to go to the CF Theodore Steinway Academy. And I want to train there. And, and the only person who'd been at that time was Markovich. And he said, they'll never go. It's never going to happen. I said, never say never, Why? dude. Why did he say that? Because at the time, Steinway's culture was, if you're American, you don't get to go there. You just go through the New York training. You don't get to go to Hamburg. And uh, just how the rules were. That was... That was 70 what? Sorry? What What was the date? 70? I went in January 2006 because I oh. lived in Australia and I worked for Steinway overseas. My uh. terms of me working in Australia was, okay, I will drop everything. Come work for you psychos. But the deal is you will buy me a round the world train plane ticket. And once I pay my dues with you, you will send me to Germany or I'm not coming. And they were like, of course we'll do it. We're so desperate for a technician. Good. Well, that, so that, I manipulated that, that, them because I wanted to go. That was a dream. So your background has been epic, one of the most epic I know of. So you should be great. I'm a roller coaster. I'm an Aquarian. My way or the highway. Yeah. I'm Scorpio rising. How's that, how's that working for you? Your, your well, now brain. that I'm on medication, it's working better. Okay. And I quit drinking. Yeah. Works a yeah, lot. Yeah, there better. you go. 
Gemini, uh, Scorpio rising, Gemini moon. That my life is a roller coaster. I'm trying to get it more even. It's so like piano. The, next, the next tool is my brother. My brother. The next tool. Actually, are I, have a, from... I do have a question here. Oh, Should we go ahead. pop it in, uh, David? Do you mind? Uh, absolutely. I have some. Break right on in any time, Ethan, with that. Please. I have something from Bill Magnuson. He said, please talk as frankly as you're willing. Sounds like you're feeling pretty willing today about <laughs> the characteristics no, of Steinways no. from different decades. Yeah. <laughs> Not too that's controversial. A, that's good. That's a show in itself. When mm. I see clients, I talk about, as I'm a food guy. I work in a restaurant. I talk about wine, even though I don't drink it anymore. There's good vintages and there's okay vintages and there's bad vintages. Yeah. And within those vintages, there's bad seasons and bad years. Steinway's just like that. There's awesome, mediocre, and total crap. Yeah. Depending on what era and who is asleep at the wheel. That's a whole Very class good. in itself. 100%. Hundred percent. I mean, David and, knows. Any favorite vintage and least favorite? Oh, that's easy. Uh, in my top five, Stretch A. Okay, so the Stretch A is not even. That's a fifteen-year period of magic. But uh, nineteen sixteen to the end of the twenties, there was some guy in the factory. When I find an intact Stretch A or an O from that era with I, a good board, I got one. I, got I one. know you do, and it's awesome. Because that guy, that belly man, and that wood, that old growth from the Adirondacks, that uh -huh. era, there's a reason why we rebuild a ton of those, because they're awesome. And they mm. kick ass, and they sound great. And I don't care what Steinway says, they sound better than any of the stuff they're putting off the line. Well, they, We're they making accept. better pianos than we ever have. No, you're not. Ridiculous. We have an absolute anthropological original from 1928. And it sounds crushing. We had a 27 it, we did. Original up. hammers, original everything yeah. except bass strings. That's it. It crushes. It sounds like a much bigger piano than a six foot four inch piano. We did our 27 stretch with a Jude board. Actually, no, Jude made the board with a Dale board, 600 year old old growth. Yeah. And a custom action with a full PTD, and we went nuts. And it's bees wing mahogany. We went, we went crazy. Actually, we didn't make any money on it, but the music sure. teacher who bought it is yeah. is in love for life. Of course. And she's given us a ton of clients. So who cares in the end? Nobody cares. Back on it's track. Awesome. Yeah. Can't get these anymore. These are the W and G tools. They're having a supply problem with these. I first learned about these when Bruce was prototyping them. This is the WNG drop, sprit, drop screw tool and the WNG regulating button tool. These are great. It's the exact height you need. People complain they're too heavy, but I like them. Drop screw adjustments, really a drag to do with a longer tool. This allows you to rest your hand right on the flanges. Go boop, 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 boop. Drops really important. That's Let off's really important. Drop Key bedding important. important. You can't do drop and let off unless you do the key bedding. I'm like a broken record. Key bedding, please. Then do let off and drop. Sometimes you can get it all snapped together. Without can, you using quickly, it. Uh, can you go through uh, your bedding protocol in about 60 seconds? Laser? I use the Steve Brady Steinway method, which is I get I start in the center. I work out. I do the knock test. And then I lift the let off rail slightly to hear the knock. And then I put it down. And then I check my fronts and I have a sort of very long screwdriver. I check the back rail bedding, which I learned from Chris Brown and Bruce Clark. Back rail is really important. It's often overlooked. The whole thing's so, got to be bedded. When the first two rails are bedded, you always check back and make sure that there's no knocking in the back row. Mm -hmm. uh, like throughout the, uh, across the whole compass of the back rail, correct? Yeah. Before I do any of this, I also take like a six or 800 grit and I sand the keyframe. I learned that from Eric Chandal in CNA. Get it nice and smooth in the, in the not the keyframe, the key bed. Get the key bed okay. nice and smooth. Oh, uh, that's different and better. Cool. It's so not it's, it's, No, it's a quick, it's a quick thing if it's the key bed. 
Anyway, so here's my buddy Chris, who's a total hack, but I've learned some. You got to come in so you can see him. Um, learned some really good tricks from Chris. He's another PTD guy. He's just working on hey, a Chris. Different... Hey, Chris. Good to see right. you. I won't bother you. I, yeah. I'm sorry. I just wanted to bother him. Yeah, you got to wait till it's not... over. There's like a bunch of people. Yeah, he's, he's, there's the hundred people. Him, I Go. Mean. I'll consult with you in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, brother. <laughs> so these the tools are nice that they're, they're well designed they're just harder to find now but you might ask wng they might be back on them again mm. speaking of old steinways as you know the old steinway has a 5 16th hex capstan they're not yes. fun not fun mm -hmm. you need to make them fun you need to learn how to bring joy to yourself and your client by not cursing or at least cursing your mind my friend Jamie in Texas, Jamie, he's a, he does consulting for Bruce. Um, he's worked in the industry a long time. He got a Williams driver. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got a Williams driver and made this for me. Five sixteenths, nice Williams tool. These are very nice uh, ratchets and wrenches, and they make them for cars. So for the hex capstan, I can get in. You know where the brackets are, where you can't get any of the other tools in to turn those capstans? This gets in there because it swivels. Now, you could make this not tremendously complicated to make. Set two machine screws or self-tapping, actually. This is some kind of like acrylic or plastic, and it, it freely swings. Very handy. I work on a lot of really old Steinways that didn't get new capstans when they got redone. So this helps a lot. Really good. Some some technicians get to those and they're like, I don't have the tool. I'm not going to regulate it. I'm just oh, not going to bother. It's like, there's no aftertouch. You have to. Or you're not giving them a gift. And that's what we do. That's so that's nice. pretty cool. That's on the list. Um, let's get into my damper tools. Damper tools are Go fun. Dampers are your friends. No, we're doing on Dampers. time, Nathan. We're doing pretty good. I'm, I'm trying to stay on We've track. We've been cruising, man. I feel like we got a ton of info so far. I feel like right. uh, I wanna, I wanna, it, I wanna boys. ask our gathered, incredibly wise room of Zoom, incredibly high-end piano technicians here to come with some questions or come with whatever you want. Ask him anything you want. Yeah, listen to your MC. I don't want to talk the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> ask, ask me, like, this in this section, ask me why I do it this way, because I do it in a way that most Americans don't do dampers. Oh, well, there's something controversial. A little nugget for you. This was given to me when I went to the Starway Academy. This is for your thumb. This goes on the stretcher of the piano. That's why there's felt on it. This is a jig for regulating all the damper bends. Oh, wow. This is made of scrap, like groovy bridge cap German cool stuff. And on the top, head, bends, um... neck, travel one, travel two. You take the damper out. Obviously, the action's out. This is not the quick. This is not the CNA tool. It's not this for going in. No, no. This is for really doing super bang up damper jobs. Often, most of the problems with dampers and grands, like a lot of them, is the neck bend. It's not the travel. It's not the fore and aft. It's not the yawing. Yeah, those are all hacks to make it better because you don't have time. The true way is you've got to get the neck so that plane of the damper head is going straight up and down, and it's you, it's the brakes. It's the brakes. If some Yahoo went in and overstretched, these are the shaft pressing tool. Sometimes people go in and they take it out and they start yanking on the the the, the, the ends of the dampers in the um, the plane wire section. Yeah. And then you get the, the zingies and the not damping because they overstretched it. Yeah, so you get your Fisker's bonsai tool for bonsai people. 
I learned this at the Mason Hamlin factory. The bonsai nippers, super sharp, super precise. You trim that damper and get it back to where it was supposed to be and undo that guy's work. See ya. We don't do super long overhanging. I've seen them three millimeters below the string. Mm. If your upstop's set wrong or your leverage is set wrong, like I work on a lot of pedals. I'm a fiend for pedals. Kiersey calls me the pedal ninja. To me, the pedal is so important. It needs to be quiet, work just right, geometry dialed in, dampers working. Pedals have to happen. But it's top down if the damper felts aren't there for you. And I'm not talking about train wreck Yamahas like today. I'm talking about really good pianos. The dampers aren't there from the top down. Who cares about the pedals? you got to get those felts working. To do that, you need to trim sometimes. Oh. You take it out of the piano to get your bends right. Sometimes you got to redo all your bends. Because someone put it in their snake wake of all these weirdo bends. Because they're like, well, I'll put it this way. No, maybe I'll do it that way. No, that's not working. And then you see these dampers that lift like this and this. And... So I do it outside the piano. It's a handy jig. It means I can use my also factory tools. This was the machinist at Steinway makes these for the students. This is a very smooth action set of pliers that I only use for dampers. I don't use these for anything else. These have a rounded nose. So when you're on your jig, you actually are doing your bends. Boop, boop, boop. Subtle movements. You're not going in there doing this. You put twists in when you do that. You might put a little twist in when you put it back in. But most of your work is really going to be, where's the neck? That's a whole class in itself. Scott Jones has a two-hour class on dampers. This is a whole other. To me, dampers is the hardest thing to do. It's harder than voicing. It's harder than learning tuning. I didn't become a good tuner until I was in for 10 years. I've been doing this 19 years. Dampers, I'm still a student. Dampers yeah. are freaking hard. Dampers are It's dip. hard. Yeah. They're just... So this is one way it made it easier for me is having the right tools to do my bends. It takes time. Yeah, you got to get your your yoga mat on top of the piano. I use a four millimeter yoga mat. Doesn't mar the finish. I get my action up. I don't like to lift stuff. So I put the yoga mat on the top on the tail of the piano. Or I have a, a keyboard stand. I put the action on. You get the action out. Take it out of the equation. Then focus on dampers. This is not an hour and a half service call. This is, I'm going to go do a damper job. I'm going to get my brain into damper world. And one of my favorite chefs is Roy Choi in LA. And he has this thing where he's making a grilled cheese sandwich. And he says, this is going to be an amazing grilled cheese sandwich. This is your whole world right now. It's making sure that grilled cheese is awesome. So when you're in damper world, yeah, you're hunched over. You're working. One bonus of having this. Not hunched over. I have better posture. I'm at the stretch of the piano, which is like here, way easier. And I've already taken some of my height stuff with another factory tool that they called the duck. Kind of looks like a duck, I guess. Quack, quack. Oh, wow. So I can get my lift from cool. the key. And it's got a handy hex setter. And then I lock it in. And there's my transfer gauge. So what's that? That's from the key, key bed to the bottom of the key, kind of? Oh, wow. To the underneath of the under level, under lever. And lost motion. It's already there. Wow. Yeah, there's this older guy at Hamburg that makes these. He, like, bangs them out. Even with the little, the little finger cut out so that gets that height then i have tried to find this this is a very hard to find it's again a gift from the damper department in hamburg this is only for dampers i have to measure the length for people this is a slotted driver which i filed down this is the exact driver for the set screw for the damper wire and it's the perfect uh, uh, length uh, uh, to go in and tighten my underlever post damper wire screws. Comfortable, light. 
balanced go in. Like, yeah, you can use a little stubby screwdriver, but then you more hunching, more gnome, more hunchback in Notre Dame. No, oh, this just gives me four more inches. So I can go in, I can sight it, and I try, try to put a light in there because it's so dark. Get some light on the subject, work on your dampers. Make people Quick question. happy. Quick yes. question here. And this again could be a whole other class in itself, but yeah, no is this do you lug in is, is all of all the tools that we've seen today, do they all come with you every day? Or no, the know, every day is is a it's on the list too, which I'll I'll put the link to, but I have it separated out where I have just a basic I have a tuning and service kit, which is I have my tuning stuff, um, my basic voicing tools we went over, this little tool roll my COVID kit and a hygrometer, a few other things, super basic bag that comes with me everywhere. Then I have a whole Gent case for the regulating and stuff that's in the trunk of the car. Then I have a dedicated kit I wanna make sure we get to for damp chasers. Then I have another kit for repair. I have a stringing kit. I have a portable PTD kit where I can do a full PTD precision touch design survey in the field on the piano. It all fits in one little box that seals and the top of the box is for the tower. So I have kits and they're all in the trunk of the car. But I don't bring all these things into the home. I just bring the tuning kit. And then if I don't have time, I say, you know what? We need to schedule a half day or a day and I'll come back. So yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I don't bring these everywhere. Right, but you do keep a bunch of things in the trunk and you know, wait, as you need them. And then you have a basic oh, yeah. kit you could bring in the house. I try to have everything with me because I'm a field guy. But if it's a job, I don't really feel like doing the field. Like I got to rebuild a liar. Or I got to do major work on action. Bring it to the shop. I drive a Volkswagen Golf diesel because I do 27,000 miles a year, 30,000 miles a year. I can fit a buzzing door for action in it just. But when I don't have an action in it, it's got one of those trunk lids. So you can't even see what's in my car. You would have no idea I'm a piano technician. Good. It's all That's sealed nice. up in the trunk. So I don't like theft. So I carry a lot. Now, real quick. Ethan? You know, it hasn't been super active. I think po probably people are mesmerized. I mean, I know I had questions during your oh, damper section thing? myself, oh. but it was almost to the level where it was like, man, what is the question? The question is, I, I need more exposure to damper work in the first place. So I'm, I'm guessing there's probably people on that level too, where they're watching these tools go by and say, okay, you know, <laughs> what do I even do I with that? Trying to crank through it a little bit. I'd like to speak to what I've learned from David Anderson, which is, this is a practice. You're a craftsman. I talk to my brother about this all the time. He's been doing his gig as a visual effects guy for 30 years. If you want to get any good at something, and I'm not saying like master or whatever, just any good, you need to practice it over oh. and over and over. And you want to learn how to tune pianos? You got to do it for 10 years all the time. You want to learn how to voice? You got to do it for five or 10 years. You want to begin to work on pedals and dampers? You got to take them on. You don't run away. You don't take one class and say, well, I'm a damper guy. No, you got to get in there and do it again and again and again and again and again. It's like playing an instrument repetition, having good work habits, having good tools. That's how you get there. And I'm still learning. I'm only 46. So moving along quickly, do a lot of damp chasers. I have a very expensive setup for damp chasers because I can put a damp chaser in in 30 or 40 minutes. Wow. I'm fast. I got a super cool driver from Festival from Germany. From, Sorry? From beginning to end, 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah, I'm fast. I got a whole setup because I got a really sweet Festool driver setup from Germany with lithium ion batteries, two of them that are always charged. I can put any kind of head on this, including it just all comes in the kit, which is not cheap, but it's a great kit. Right angle attachment to get the humidistat in between the beams, like on a Steinway B where there's no room. Boom, I can put either the Jacobs chuck on it or the Centro Tech bus tool chuck on it. Boom, I'm in tight. Totally cool tool. I freaking love Festool. They're Germans, 
who make Germans and Japanese, let's face it, other stuff rocks. They make really F good tools. F F -S -S -E -O -O -L, fest tool. Yep. And yeah. we won't forget. You know what? I'm going to put it up now. I'm going to put the link up for all these tools before we forget. Yeah. Let's get the link. Copy yeah, link. Thank you. Just don't want to forget, you know. And we're just going to put it up in the chat. Go with me. Chat. And your tool ah. list and stuff too, right? That's what I'm doing right now. Cool. Grace tits. Boom. Here we go. Grace tits. Wow. Thank you so much. Got everything. That we're Rock talking about today. Wow, man. We we flew through this. No, we're not done yet. I want to finish the damp chaser thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is the two agenda. So I can use this for repairs because it's too speed. Go. Yeah, go. You got 10 minutes, Tom. Yeah. So the festival stuff, I can use this for repairs too because it's too speed. I got a whole set of different counter bore and counter sinks in the same bag. I've got this cool camping bag. I put it in. I also have got... I use my own zip ties, including the zip ties that have the little hole you can put screws in because I'm a fiend for dressing my damp chaser wires. I want it to look like uh, JPL NASA level wiring underneath that piano. I don't want to see stuff hanging down. I was a master electrician in the theater department a long time ago. It's called dressing wires. You want to look good. Brings me joy. A client doesn't see it. Makes me feel good about my install when I have the wires looking nice. So then I got a tool roll with all these other hand tools for damp chaser work. Got a swiveling ratchet from Germany, wow. multiple heads, swivel. You can put different bits on it. Totally has multiple axes for swiveling for the damp chaser. Again, it's hex quarter, so you can use it to drive in your, your damp chaser stuff, which is all hex Phillips now, but there's some old ones that are um, flathead, which is a dumb idea, but they quickly realized their folly and went to Phillips. If you don't have hex, you should have hex, it's useful. Also have, I have a set of hex bits from Germany I use all the time in a selection box. All my different bits, even the hex for Everett upright lids in a school that's weirdo metric get the lid off and a driver this is a, a driving screwdriver that's ratcheting if i want to be really fast in my driving with its own bit holder that's all in the damp chaser kit that's how you do a damp chaser in 30 or 40 minutes you have a 450 dollar kit i put in 30 or 40 damp chasers a year and we make a nice margin on damp chasers I got a flat rate for putting a damp chaser in for my boss. And let's face it. I don't need to do crunches a lot. Yeah, I'm trying to lose a couple pounds, but I don't want to be under there for an hour and a half. Screw that, man. I want to get in and out. Get that damp chaser in, schedule the tuning follow-up. I like being fast at damp chasers. Who wants to lie under a piano for an hour and a half? That does not bring me joy. Getting them done fast, look, making them look nice, that makes me happy. No. Oh. That's the kind of the end of the list. Let me um <laughs> question from Time Eric to take Johnson. a breath. How do I cut? Thank you, Eric. Is he saying I can't see it? So how do you cut? How do I trim the wire ties? Is that the question? How do you cut the damp chaser bucket hanger wires? I have a dedicated cutter. Oh, you mean the the hanger? Oh, I have a in my stringing kit. If I need to do that, I have a heavy duty pair of cutters I can use for that. That's in the stringing kit. I'll know I have to do that. You don't always have to do that. It um, depends on the piano. I do have these. And that makes uh, the bucket closer to the soundboard, basically. Yeah, or you want to do yeah, that. I guess closer. Yeah. Yeah. Got I it. have a whole other. We're not going into that. I have a whole other stringing kit with some heavy duty stuff. I use this for smaller wires and for trimming the ends of my cable ties. It's really lame to leave the ends of your cable ties, the little tails, once you pull it tight. Go and trim your tails, make it look nice. I want, I've had customers go underneath and look, they're like, what am I getting for my 650? They go underneath and they're like, ooh, it looks so tidy and nice. Thank you. I say, you're welcome. Which brings us to, I need to say thank you. You want them to just say thank you, I love it. It sounds great, it plays so much better. And you say, you're welcome. Thank you. 
thank you for allowing me and you're not saying all this you're basically saying thank you for allowing me into your life and into your home to have this privilege especially during this time with the covid just like we're going into people's homes we're going into places yeah, that's man. like a privilege that's not our right to do that so to go and do our job any more questions we got five minutes you got i'm not good at reading chat so maybe you guys can be my translator. no problem yeah you're on your phone too uh i'll actually take the pause as an opportunity to just say in the chat there give some announcements and updates so puja put in some uh links and one is so the feedback form. So we always like to hear how things went for you. And if you have any suggestions or, or want to <clears throat> give us some reinforcement on the things that are working well, there's a link if you want to sign up for a subscription to Piano Technicians Masterclasses. Um, on that note, we have a masterclass coming up. And it'll be two weeks from now. And that's with Del Fondrick. So if you want to sign up for the craftsman level um, subscription, then you will you can get in on that masterclass with Del Fondrick. We're likely going to be talking about epoxying soundboards um, as a method of basically restoring uh, old cracked soundboards that don't work, which is it's pretty intriguing method he's come up with. And um, on top of that, just uh, the guest for next week is going to be David Anderson. <laughs> so he'll, oh. he'll be back next week and we're just going to give a Q&A with him and People have been knocking on his door telling him, hey, we want to hear, hear something from you. So come back next week and we'll focus on David and, and hear some of his wisdom. <clears throat> I just put the links chat. up. Today's tools, we did 20 greatest hits. I put that link up. I also put up what's called the Kirschenbaum master list of everything that's in my car and where you can get it or how you can make it. Um, those spreadsheets are up there in the Dropbox for the, anybody. You can also email me if you need actually want me to like measure some stuff. I can do that for you here at the shop. Um, if you want to make some of these tools we've talked about that you can't get. Um, and my email is piano tuner, piano tuner at gmail.com. I don't take phone calls, but I do answer emails. Awesome. Lucky hey, email look, address. That's pretty impressive. Um, this 58 minutes or whatever was a pure pleasure, man. You Me too. It was, it was fun. Yeah. Look, it, it just all kept rolling, and you gave you just gave away so much, gave gave to pleasure you so Indeed. much, and it's um, it, the the atmosphere that you give it in is refreshing, and you know it's heartwarming. Yes, thank, thank you so you. much. It is. Yeah. I feel blessed every day that I get to work six days a week on pianos. And I know a lot of you out there don't get to do that. And because of where we are right now with the pandemic, uh, people are stuck at home or they don't have as many jobs. And I just feel like the big reason I did this was to give people some entertainment and maybe inspire them again and remind them like, okay, maybe you're working part-time or quarter time or you're on furlough. But when you do get back, because we are going to get back, this is not how we're going to live forever. Right. I don't think. Try to get inspired for joy again and to work oh, on pianos. That's the whole That's why thing. I'm doing this. Try to help people, help themselves, you know? Thank you so much, Boaz. Thank You're you, welcome. Man. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Ethan, excellent. Uh, one, once again, the best partner a guy could have is you, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. And I'll share Thank my screen that. here real quick. Thank you, oh, the, the whole staff. That's right. Yeah. Our team is just just kills it. All these wonderful people helping us, and especially Pooja's on the job today um, over there. You know, just a, a young college student over there in India, learning what it's like to be a piano technician. And she's—I'm just really impressed with with her uh, her passion for helping us out and doing a great job. So, give her a special uh, a shout out today. Yeah, hey, so um, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, and. Yeah, we're just about at time here. So any any final words from everyone? It sounds like we kind of got our, our wrap I want to add one more thing. We talked yeah, about practice, inspiration, you know, making people's lives better and all that, but and, and keeping up with all this. But in any way, people get an opportunity to have a mentor, to take these master classes, to read, to talk to pianists and listen to pianists, oh. to get that feedback. All this stuff is all part of your development and continuing education and Ethan and his team help with that. It's really important to not get in your rut of this is kind of all I do. 
you want to always be thinking, how can I improve? How can I improve my toolkit? It's not just what I showed you today. It sounds like so California, but a lot of your toolkit, like I said, is between your right ear and your left ear. That's the vast majority of your toolkit. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. All right. And I'll, I'll remind everybody too. just, I'll take an extra minute here that I usually don't take. And that is just to remind everyone. And I don't even think Boaz, he's so generous. I don't think he even realizes it. He helped launch Piano Technician's Masterclasses. He was our very first instructor. Yeah. He put together an incredible class on voicing when we were just, you know, think about if, if technology for all this is difficult nowadays, think about what it was three years ago, trying to do to. streaming masterclasses and all this stuff. So he, he was a, a real trooper and he put together this class and it was excellent and it still is. And I put a link there in the chat if anybody wants to sign up for that alone. If you do um, sign up for the subscription, that's also linked to on that page, then you'll automatically have access to Del Fondrick's masterclass next week. So really great deal. And all a bunch of other masterclasses that we have in the library. So oh. thank you, especially Boaz for launching this whole thing. We really You're appreciate welcome. it. My pleasure. And if you have to pay for Dell or anybody, he's so worth it. I've taken all of his classes on belly work and design and Dell is awesome. Please, you know, but any of the people who come in here is going to be awesome. Tune in. It's worth your time. I always listen when I'm at the shop. Oh. Awesome. All, all right. right thank you. Thank you so thank much, you everybody. See I'll you sign all next off. week. Thank we'll you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for giving us an hour of your time. Remember that you can catch us live online every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's right. Go to pianotechradio.com to register so you can interact live and ask questions of our guests. See you next week.